Okay. Um, we're going to go over some quadratic problem solving. I'm just going to say this stuff out loud so we can get our information. We're going to say we got a bus and it costs uh, $200 to run the bus. So uh, $200 to run the bus. Okay, think of that as, they, sometimes they call this in business like a fixed cost. Maybe that's like to get gas in, to pay the driver, something like that. And then it's another $30, nah, I'm making that up, I'm going to say $25. $25 per uh, person, okay? Again, these are the costs, okay? I'm going to call this a cost. This is a cost to the company. This would be considered a variable um, price, okay? And maybe this is to get insurance in case they crash or something. they got to pay 25 bucks a person. Who knows what they're doing, um, what this is. We're also going to say the bus uh, uh, holds uh, 30 people, okay? So it has a max capacity. I'll call it max capacity. And... Um, we're going to charge, oh, I don't know, uh, $50 a seat per seat, okay? So for someone to, um, this would be considered profit on their end, okay? So this would be part of their profit, um, $50 a seat. They're, um, oh, sorry, it's not technically profit, it's, it's revenue, because profit is after, so we'll call it revenue. This is their revenue, that right? E, there you go. So that's what they charge someone to ride the bus. And that looks like a 6, but I'm going to turn that into a 5. Um, but there's this little thing where the bus, if it's not full, so if not full, um, bus will charge uh, plus $4 per seat. Okay? Um, for every empty seat. It's a weird scenario, okay? In fact, it's almost an impossible scenario because you'd have to know how much, how many empty seats you're going to have beforehand. Um, really what we're trying to do is, if we're going to do this, we're trying to figure out where can we maximize profit as a company. And maximizing profit um, deals with a, a peak or a trough. So we kind of have to figure out, you know, is this a sinusoidal function? Is this a some kind of quadratic? Is it a cubic function? We just do not know right now, okay? So let's get rid of all those weird functions. Um, we're going to build something, so I'm going to call this f at x, that's what type of function this is, is equal to, and I'm going to try to build up scenarios. So first of all, the function is a, um, we're going to call this a uh, profit? No, we're going to call this a revenue function, okay? Um, and revenue a lie. This should be a profit. We're going to call it profit. You need to know this part of it. Profit is equal to um, your revenue minus your cost. Okay? Um, so, we got to figure out what's the best way. So, gave this a little thought. We have to break this down much, much farther. Revenue is technically your price multiplied by um, the amount of product, or, or we'll say in this case, it's people on the bus, okay? And this is really what this question is trying to get at. Um, and not only just people on the bus, but, um, uh, no, I, I guess that's the best way, is we're trying to figure out where to, to maximize the price on this. So, this is how we're gonna say this. We're gonna say let X equal empty seats. Okay, this is a weird way to write it. Um, so then our function for kind of our, our price is going to be, well, um, how much does it cost? It costs, we said, $50, okay? $50 plus, depending on empty seats, four times every empty seat. That's what X is. X is empty seats, okay? So that's how we built the first one, and this is kind of like our, our, our pricing model. The second part of this, okay, and this is like the price we're trying to figure out. Second part is people on the bus. Well, the people on the bus is going to be 30, because it maxes at 30, um, minus empty seats. If there's five empty seats and there's 30 people, 30 minus 5, 25 people on the bus. So this is our price, and this is our people, okay? And this is what we're trying to get at. Price times people is going to give you what revenue is. So we've turned this into a function, and if you take a quick glance, this is actually a quadratic. 
So now that we know this, um, we're hoping it's some quadratic, most likely negative, where it has like a max value, because we're trying to figure out max value. Um, empty seats is our x value, and our function, I think it's going to be like people price, I think it is revenue up here. This is what we're trying to maximize. So empty seats to maximize revenue, okay? So let's take this information, shrink it a little, put it into a corner, and then let's actually try to work with this, because it's not the easiest question to work with. Thank you. There we go. So I'll rewrite the function down here. f at x is equal to, like we said, I'm going to repeat it. $50 is our price plus $4 for every empty seat multiplied by the 30 people on the bus subtract every single empty seat. Well, um, we're going to distribute. Uh, have you ever done like the rainbow method where it's like blah, 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 this and this? Whatever it is, foil, rainbow, whatever you know, we're distributing. So I'm going to quickly try to distribute this information. Um, 50 times 30 is going to give me 1,500. 50 times negative x is negative 50x. Um, 4 times 4x four times 30 should give us 120x, and this 4x uh, times x should be negative 4x squared. I'm going to rearrange and collect like terms all in one set. So I'm going to get the value that has the highest exponent. I'm going to put that first. That's just something we're used to looking at when we do polynomials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so negative 4x squared. Um, then we have negative 50 and positive 120. This should be positive 70x, and finally plus. 1,500. So here's our function in standard form. Great. How do I find maximizing? Well, maximizing, um, we take standard form and we complete the square. Do you remember completing the square? Okay. Um, so when we complete the square, we'll bring our function. Let's shrink it a little again. Let's bring our function over here. I'll put it up here. Our function is equal to negative 4x squared plus 70x plus 1,500. So I'm going to get you to help me through the steps on how you guys do completing the square, okay? Uh, our first thing is to usually divide out um, the coefficient in front of x squared. So we're going to divide out negative 4 from each of these. So we'll get um, is equal to negative 4. So this will become positive x squared minus 4 into 70 is going to go... Oh, there's going to be a decimal value in here. Oh, 70 was the right value. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think it is. Um, that's going to go in 1. And then we have 30 left over. 7, 5. Um, X. Yep. Plus 1,500. Uh, is 70 divided by 4 17.5? We can check that in a minute. You'll do that as we keep going here. 17%. Perfect. We got it. Um, so we took the coefficient out. What's the next step? Do you remember? To do with this value. Our b here. So we have the new b value. Thank you. Um, we take that b, and then I'll kind of write it up here. We, we divide by 2, and then we square it, because then we're going to add and subtract Oops, and subtract that value into these brackets, right? Daddy, okay, so... Daddy! Yeah, honey. Okay, I'll get it for you. Can you, while we're doing this, divide 17.5 by 2 and then square it to see what our two values are? Very quickly. Which one? This? Yeah. 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 What did you get there? Um, so divided is 8.75. Okay. And when you square it, it's 76.5625. Woo hoo! 76.5625. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, ridiculous number. It actually worked really nicely if we had done this in fractions. It would have been a little nicer for us. Um, so as we go through this, we have negative 4. We have x squared minus 17.5x. And then we have plus 76.5. 2, 5, and then minus that same amount, plus. and then still plus, I'm going to squeeze it in, 1,500 in there. Great. We actually take the negative value out of the brackets, and we're going to combine it into there. So I should move this over a little. We'll have negative 4 
x squared minus 17.5x plus 76.5625, end bracket. And when it comes out, what we have to do is we still have to multiply by that coefficient. So we take that value and multiply it by negative 4. We have to multiply it by negative 4 when it comes out of there. So it's going to be um, 1,500 plus, I'm going to turn it to red, plus 76.5625 times 4. All right, plus 306.25. Uh, wonderful. What's 306.25 plus 1,500? Three hundred and six point two five plus fifteen hundred. Uh, minus. Uh, do it again because you put the wrong number in there. Minus. Um, no, fifteen hundred plus three oh six. So three hundred and six point two five. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you ended up with positive one thousand eight hundred and six point two five. We think we've got that part. Great. Um, the whole point of this is if it's done correctly, we should be able to get a um, uh, perfect square trinomial. So we should be able to square root this term and square root that term, and that's what's going to be left into our bracket. So can you find a square root of 76.5625? And then I'll find the square root of x squared in my head. I'm pretty good at that one. 76.5625. Square root it. Oh, All right, it's a somewhat nice number. Isn't that the number from before? Um, when you divide yeah, by two. you're right, you're right, excellent. And then we just bring down the um, operation in front of the middle or the b value, so it becomes negative, and it's squared equals uh, here's our negative four and plus one eight zero six two five. So right now this is in um, Vertex form. form. How is this helpful? Well, vertex form is really nice because the vertex is where there's a max or a min. So this is a negative quadratic, so it definitely, I'm going to do a rough sketch here. It definitely goes up and down, okay? Um, it's telling us that its max value, the max amount of money it would make, is $1,806.25, okay? And that's when you would have positive 8 0.75 tickets or empty seats. Now we've got a problem here. You can't have. Yeah, you can't have a 0.75 empty seats. We can either have eight empty seats or nine empty seats. So now we got to take this value. So we're definitely working with eight or nine, and we're gonna plug it in. I shrink these. I'm gonna shrink it a little here. Put this all back up here. We're dealing with eight or nine seats. We just don't know which it is yet. So we're going to take our original um, standard form one, because it'll be a little easier than plugging um, plug in. What was our standard form one? Uh, there it is. Uh, F at x. That would be our factor form, actually. We've done all three forms. Negative 4x squared plus 70x plus 1,500. Um, if we have 8, remember x is empty seats, so F at 8. And we've got to find f at 9. Whichever one gives us the greater value, because that's revenue, that's what we're going to go with in empty seats. Okay, um, so I'm going to write them out. I'm going to try to get you to, with your calculator, help us out with the harder values here as I write them. So negative 4 times 9 squared. Uh, help me with the 70 times 8 and 70 times 9. Those are going to be a little harder. Um, 8 times is 64, so 4 times 64. Actually, I can do this. This is 560. Mm -hmm. What is 64 times 4? 64 times 4 is 256. All right, so negative 256 plus 560 plus 1500. That's going to be the revenue in the first question. This is going to be 7960. What did you get? 2,316. 2,316? Uh, oh, okay. Yes, honey. This one? Oh, it's a negative. 
Oh, yeah, I was going to say that number. Which one? This one? Yeah. That's a ruler. Um, I'm going to tell you very quickly, the reason I knew this was incorrect is because it was a higher value than our 1,806, right? It can't be. We said that's the max. So you redid it. Oh, my gosh. There. Oh. You redid it. There you go. And what would you get? 1,000. Four. Okay, that's like $2 less than our other one, so that might be it. The other one is negative 324 plus 360 plus 1,500. And again, we're, we're counting nickels and dimes here, but this is actually what the question's asking us. 630. Plus three, uh, 630, yep, thank you, plus 1,500. Oh, there we go. So it's better to have nine empty seats. Now... This is optimizing at nine empty seats. So all that did was tell us the number of empty seats and it gives us a price. So I'm gonna take this question a little farther. Oops, come back. It's a really long question, eh? Squeeze it down here. So now that we've done this information, what else do we need? Well, we've, we've gotten some good info. We have a new price. We know that X equals nine, so nine empty seats. That's some good info. Um, our new price, remember our price was 50, um, plus 4 times x, so it's 4 times um, 9. So our new price is going to be 4 times 9 is 36. $86 per seat. Hello, dog. Okay, so we used to charge $86 a seat. And that was a super expensive bus ride. Um, and now with that, what we've done is we can start to figure out, remember I drew this before, um, profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So we've finally started to figure out our revenue and now we can incorporate our cost. So I'm gonna say profit is equal to, revenue is gonna be um, $86, okay? So this is our price, so I'll put a dollar sign, times the number of people. How many people do we say we should have on the bus? 30. Thir well, it's well, a max 30 minus nine. minus nine. So how many people should we have? So 21 people, I'm going to use this little uh, graphic here. There's our revenue. What is our cost going to be? Remember, the cost is $200 plus uh, $25 a person. So $200 plus 25 times 9. Oop, not 9, I lied. Times 21. Thank you. Times 21. So some more difficult math. So our business can become very math heavy. Um, I'll do the right side. Can you do 86 times 21 for me there? This is going to be 20 times 21 while you do that. What is it? Yeah. 1,000. Oh, yes, we did it before. Thank you very much. Uh, what's 25 times 21? Maybe you can get it faster than me. Times 21. Is it 525. 525. There you go. Uh, it's minus 525. Uh, plus 200, so 1,806, subtract 725, what's that going to equal? 725, yeah, 1,000, so they would maximize profit, the max profit they can get is $1,081, that's if they have empty 21 seat, or sorry, empty 9 seats, so they sell 21 tickets, and they sell the tickets at $86 a seat. Ugh. Hard question.